Well, good news for those of you planning a trip to Johor Bahru next week. There will be more bus tickets and more time slots to choose from when the expanded land vaccinated travel lane between Singapore and Malaysia kicks in on Monday, December 20th. Under current VTL rules, the two designated bus operators are allowed to each sell up to 1,440 tickets a day. But from next week, they will be able to increase the number of tickets sold by 50%. Journalist Toh Ting Wei has more on how the bus operators plan to accommodate the expected increase in demand and whether it's worth taking short trips using the LAN VTL. From what I understand, each of the two designated bus operators for the vaccinated travel lanes for between Singapore and Malaysia via the causeway, they each have 720 more tickets to sell. So there's a 50% increase on their current allocation. So what they have done is to increase the number of bus services. So for the Singapore-based Transstar, they have increased like their daily bus services. Now I think it's 16. They have increased it by 8. So there will be, come next week, there will be 24 bus services from them daily between Singapore and Malaysia. Then for the Malaysia-based operator, Causeway Link, they will increase their number of bus services by 10. So from 16 currently, it will become 26 bus services daily. So then the number of like tickets that they can sell from this extended bus services is 720 tickets. So that's how they will increase. And these tickets have actually gone on sale for cost selling. Cost selling will start selling their tickets. They already started selling their tickets this morning at 8 a.m. And for the Transstar, they will start selling their tickets on December 17th. So the demand so far, I think it should be quite strong given that for the rest of December, both operators have sold out the existing tickets that they put on sale earlier. So for the new tickets, I haven't checked on the status of the Causeway Link additional tickets yet. But for Transstar 1, we are expecting reasonably strong demand. But in terms of whether this will, whether we will see a surge of the, say like, you know, before, before the pandemic, you had a lot of Singaporeans going there for one day just to shop and eat and then coming back. Whether we'll see this group of people return to Malaysia in big numbers, I think that's quite unlikely because of the testing requirements. Because like when you look at it now, before, let's say I, I want to head over to Malaysia, I have to get tested before I enter Malaysia. And once I reach there, I have to get tested every day daily for six days. And when I return to Singapore, I also have to be tested daily for seven days. So let's say if you want to go on a day trip there, there'll be one test before you enter one test after you enter, and when you return to Singapore, you also have to take tests for seven more days. So we are looking at almost 10 tests just for spending one day there. And in terms of the cost, this easily adds up to, I think like considering the supervised test and depending on who you go to, what test kit you use, it can easily be more than $100. So for that, I don't think like, I think it's quite a big deterrence for anyone looking to go there for a day trip.